what you're going to be doing in this video is creating a simple cloud formation template that describes in this three bucket and deploying that template and creating a cloud formation stack. So the first thing you're going to do is sign into the AWS console. Once you've done that, you're going to come over to cloud formation under the recently visited uh, section of the page. Now, if you don't see this and there's a small chance that you might not, um, because this is a newer layout, you simply come up to the search bar and start typing out cloud formation. And um, the first option that you should get is cloud formation. So we're going to go that path. Okay, and this, once you get taken to the cloud formation landing page, uh, what you're going to do next is you're going to come over here and look for the create stack button. And once you've created or click the create stack button, you'll be taken to this screen. Uh, on this screen, you have two sections. Uh, the first section is the uh, template preparation. We're going to use the template as ready option because we actually do have a template already. Next, we're going to come down to the specify template section. Okay, our option that we're going to go with is upload a template file. Okay, now this next step, what you're going to do is actually create the template file. Now, throughout this video, I've been saying that we have a template file. We actually do. Uh, I, we could have done this in the beginning. Uh, either way works. I find it a little more timely to do it now. Okay, so what I'm showing you on the screen now is the actual template file. It's basically just the framework for it. Uh, and where we got that template file, you'll find down in the descriptions section of this video. But what I am going to do is walk through briefly where you obtain this template file. Um, the GitHub repository link for CFN 101 workshop. Again, this link is in the description section. You want to go into the code directory. And once you get to the code directory, you want to go to workspace. Once you get to the workspace directory, you'll scroll all the way down until you see template hyphen and hyphen stack yaml. And you open that up and you'll see what we have here is identical to what we're showing here. Okay, now the code snippet that you'll need for the uh, template is uh, in available in the description section also. I'm just going to paste it in here in real time because I wanted to show uh, how we actually are constructing this, uh, this template, this YAML file. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm just simply going to save it. Once I've saved it, we're going to go back to the Create Stack page, Cloud Formation. I'm going to choose File. Here's our file, the template hyphen and hyphen stack. And we've uploaded it. Now, what we can see here is the S3 path to that file is uh, shown. There's a view in designer option. We don't need that, but if there were changes that you wanted to make, view and designer would open up a WYSIWYG editor where you'd be able to go in and make changes in real time. But we've already made our changes. Everything looks good, no errors, etc. So we're going to click the next button. So now that we have basically created our cloud formation template file, it has the instructions in it for creating an S3 bucket. We're going to specify the stack details. Okay, so for this exercise, we'll use CFN hyphen workshop s3. We will not be adding any, uh, there are no parameters, so we don't have to make any changes here. We simply click next. We're going to forego any tags at the moment. In fact, we're going to leave everything else as a default. We're then going to click the next button. Scroll back up to the top of the screen. We're being given the opportunity to review here. 
So we have our template URL, which goes to our actual you are the template file. We have a description and we have a specified stack detail section, tags, permissions, etc. All of those things that we saw before. And uh, that's the review looks good. So we're going to kick, click the create stack button. And now we're taken to this page where we see here that the create and progress status is shown, which means the template right now is being uh, used to create a cloud formation stack. We can hit the refresh button if we like a few times. You can see the different steps that AWS is performing. And it's been a few seconds, I'd say 15 seconds, maybe less. And ultimately we end up with this create complete status. Let's refresh again, make sure there are no other steps. Okay, so now our stack has been successfully created using our CloudFormation template file. So understanding that based on the information AWS is showing us now, we should have an S3 bucket that has now been created using the template file that we created. So I'm going to type in S3 in the search field. I'm going to go to S3. What we're looking for is a bucket. Okay, so what I want to draw your attention to is the top two items that show up on the bucket list here. So the first bucket, CF for cloud formation hyphen templates, hyphen uh, some randomly generated uh, characters, followed by US East one. The second bucket starts off with CFN, okay, hyphen workshop, hyphen S3. If you remember earlier in this video, we outlined the name of our stack as CFN hyphen workshop hyphen three. There's another hyphen S3 bucket hyphen and some randomly generated characters. Okay, so what I wanna point out here is that if we only created one, if our template was to create one S3 bucket, why are there now two here? The third one you can eliminate from this conversation because it was created for a different uh, time, has nothing to do with our exercise here. The reason that there are two buckets created is because uh, when you upload a file, which we did earlier, we uploaded our YAML file, which is the cloud for uh, uh, cloud formation template. And what S3 does automatically is if you upload a file locally from your computer into the uh, cloud formation um, builder, you end up with a uh, Amazon will basically create an S3 bucket for you, and it will place that YAML file in that S3 bucket. So that is what that explains the first bucket named CF templates. There's code here, I believe, is randomly generated, and the region is at the trailing end of the name. The second bucket, however, is actually uh, a bucket that was created from our stack, and we know that because of the name. The first portion or the first half of this name, CFN workshop, CFN hyphen workshop hyphen S3. If we click on that to expand it, we'll see that there it doesn't include anything um, as it shouldn't. And um, that is an explanation of what the outcomes were. And the good news is we actually have created a stack, We've executed that stack. The stack has created an S3 bucket for us. And in addition to that, it is also created an S3 bucket that will store the YAML file itself. Um, that's a good measure to take because uh, should something happen to your desktop environment uh, and you no longer have access to the local file that was used or the YAML file that was used to create it, you'll have a copy of it in your account in, S in the S3 bucket. Uh, and the next and final part of this exercise is to enable versioning. Well, for our S3 bucket in, to order, in order to enable versioning, which isn't enabled by default when a bucket is created, 
You click on the bucket name itself. You come to the properties tab. This may vary differently from the AWS lab that accompanies that we're following. Essentially, you'll see here bucket versioning is disabled. You want to click the edit button. We want to switch that from suspend to enable. I'm not sure why it says suspend um, instead of disabled, uh, but that is an Amazon question. We're going to enable it. That's what we want. That's what we're concerned with. You click save changes and we have a success message letting us know that we have in fact enabled versioning or bucket versioning. And that pretty much completes the lab exercise if you're following along. Uh, there is one more in piece that is very important. And obviously, if you want to go back and, and look at some of these things, look at the bucket, look at the stack, uh, look at the YAML code, etc. You can do all of those things. If you are done, you want to delete the stack that was created. And the primary reason why this is a good habit to get into if you're following labs and you're learning AWS is that AWS has services that are paid and AWS has services that are free. Uh, a good practice is to remove anything that you added during a lab. That way you don't have to worry about any trailing charges that may occur later on. So what we want to do in this case is we're going to go back to the cloud formation interface. And in the cloud formation interface, we're going to uh, select the radio button next to our particular stack that we created. We're going to click delete. Now, this is very important. You'll get a pop up basically essentially telling you that if you delete this stack, all of the resources will be deleted as well. And this is according to their deletion policy. Well, we didn't specify any uh, deletion policies outside of the default. So what should happen is once I click this button, the two S3 buckets that were created, both the S3 bucket that housed the YAML file and the S3 bucket itself that were a part of the instructions for the YAML file should both be deleted along with this stack. So essentially when you delete a stack, you're deleting all of the resources that you asked AWS to spin up based on the requirements of your actual YAML file. Hit delete. Our status is delete in progress. We're being told it's been initiated. Give it a couple of seconds. We'll hit the refresh button. And we apparently have been successful. Now we don't have a message saying that we were successful after hitting the refresh button, but we do notice the stack is no longer visible. So let's go to the S3 bucket buckets and see if we have three buckets as we had originally. Okay, so interesting. What's happened here is this is our old bucket that has nothing to do with the exercise. And there's still a bucket in here that says CloudFormation templates. If you recall, this is the, I'm going to expand it here. This is the bucket that contains our YAML file. Now, just having S3 buckets alone isn't billable. So that's not something that you really have to worry about. But the important thing here to note is that the bucket that was created by the stack has been removed. Although the template folder or the template bucket containing the actual template itself has not, uh, I would can, I would view that as a insurance policy. Um, in the event that uh, the same way that I stated earlier that if you were to lose this file on your local environment, you'd be able to come to the cloud and recover it, or you'd be able to come to S3, the S3 bucket and recover it. Well, that still remains the same case even after the S uh, the stack was the CloudFormation stack was deleted. Amazon holds on to the template bucket that was created, even though you're no longer using the template uh, or the results of the template itself. I think that's personally a good measure to take, uh, especially in the, the, the business of uh, 
development and technology, it's not uncommon for things to be deleted accidentally. In fact, it's very, very common. So the fact that Amazon has a has this process in place by default to hold on to the template, um, it's an S3 bucket. Just having an S3 bucket itself doesn't necessarily cost you anything unless you are sharing that bucket with the public. We aren't doing that. All access is blocked. All public access is blocked by default. So our resource is gone, but the actual template itself still exists in case we want to spin it up again in the future. And that concludes the lab.